Okay, I drew this little uh, chevron pattern. You can either do your own or you can borrow one. There's actually one in the gallery. If you click on the gallery icon that looks like a tic-tac-toe at the top of the screen and you type in chevron under the search term, I click descending to get the most recent ones and then search you come up with an SVG chevron pattern here. There's um, another chevron pattern here for a background, and you could use that. If you click on uh, download, you can get the pattern here. You see this one's a little uh, not quite as deep as the one that I drew, but I'd like to show you how you can change that if you like. Um, First, you can just drag this together to make it deeper, and then you could duplicate it. Let's say we wanted it like this, and then we wanted to go to Edit, Duplicate. We wanted more of them. We don't want seven rows. We want maybe, let's say one row, and maybe three columns, and um, maybe just barely overlapped, minus 0 0.01, apply, and if we zoom in real close, we can see if they're lined up, not real good, so let me undo it and try duplicating again. You don't want that overlap to be too much because the Chevron pattern zero, zero, 001 and apply. Then we could select all and weld. But before I would weld this, if I wanted those Chevron pieces to be um, closer together in order to fill a, a character, I would select it. And I would hold down the control key and move this. Well, first I have to break it so or split it because it's all one unit right now. I'm going to click on the split or control plus P at the bottom of the screen. Now I hold the control key and move the arrow up until I get these pieces as close as I would like to have them in order to make a design that would fit inside letters. So once I get it the way I like it, I can join them again by clicking the Join icon and then going to Duplicate. And maybe I would, I'll do Apply and then see if they'll weld. They welded nicely. And now I'm going to duplicate this down or just do Control, Shift, and Drag and make sure I get the spacing right. And then I can line them up on the left by typing L. And then I, I have a, a big design. So whether you want to use that design or whether you want to use one that you create like this, um, either one will work. I would join all these before I were to use them. So. Uh, I'm going to go back to this one. I like the lines a little bit thinner than that one. Uh, to create this one, I just went up to the, the basic shapes, typed in SQ to find the square, double click the square, and then made the, the square thin about, I think I did this But really, when I did it, I just dragged it up. These are about 1.17 inch across once I shrunk it up. But you see, this one's a little bit longer than that. So to get this to be a chevron, I click it again until I get the rotational handles, and hold the Control key and drag three clicks. One two, three, and um, you can do it at any angle that you want. I wanted this angle. 
So I'm going to hold control and shift and drag and then mirror and then zoom in really close. So I'll type 4 and 3 and I'm going to line these up so that they are perfectly overlapping and once I'm happy with that then I can weld them welds at the bottom of the screen and this gives me one chevron that I can then duplicate as many times as I'd like and I would do the same thing as I did on the the other screen for, for the other chevron that is to duplicate and I want to do uh, the spacing on this to until this overlaps this. Let's try a minus point three. Not quite enough, so I'm going to keep my hand on the button here. I got a point nine. That's not quite enough, so I'm going to do point four, maybe point four five. That looks good, I think. So then I click on how many how many columns do I want? Maybe eight, and I'll I'll just do a row at a time. Or I could I could do um, let's say I wanted eight rows here. You see they're kind of close together, so I think I won't do the eight. I'll just do one row first, apply, and then a weld. So that I have one chevron and now I'm going to select this again and I'm going to go to edit duplicate and I'll do um, maybe eight with a spacing of maybe point two is too big, point one is too big. I probably have to do a minus and I'll just keep doing this until I get the spacing that I want. If you want this space to be the same as this, you could make it, um, you can just kind of guess. I'll leave it like that. It's really up to what you want. Now click on apply and we'll zoom back out so that you can see. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff. I don't need that many. In fact, I probably only need the one. So I'm just going to delete the extra. Make sure I don't have any hiding way out here. Okay, so I have this one and then I can make it smaller if I want it more dainty to fill a letter, you can make it very small and then duplicate it again the same way. The idea is to get the pattern the way you like it and the size that you want it. So I'm just going to use what I made before. You just uh, weld them all together when you've got it the way you want it. Now what I'm going to do is add an alphabet letter. I'll click on text and fonts and I just selected a kind of a chunky font and click on the T and I'll just type an A, capital A, and accept. So I'm going to make this A very big and um, I want to fill the A with the chevron pattern. I want it, don't want it bigger than the pattern. Uh, you can make it as big as you want. But before I um, fill the pattern, I need to have a frame for it. Chevron pieces look kind of funny just hanging, hanging out there. So I'm just going to duplicate this control shift and drag. And I'm going to do a shadow layer. And I think I'll just make it a minus point to an inset shadow to give me a little bit of a frame around the letter. Click accept and then join. 
so now I have a frame for my chevrons. So to get the chevrons, I'm going to select both of these and just type S to stack them or center them. And I'd like to kind of see the pattern that's underneath it just to make sure that it's going to be pleasing. Maybe move this down just a little. It's hard to say. You can put it wherever you want. And you can resize it to kind of fit. I just didn't want too many points in there. You don't okay, want so now I don't think you What's want. That? I don't think you want to resize your letter. You might want to resize your pattern. Oh, you, that's true. That's true. You don't want to resize it if you already got it. So, because my outline over here would change a size. So, that's true. Once you get the size you want, then you can create the shadow and outline. Okay. So what I'll do next is just select it all and click on the Boolean Join icon, which is Control plus U at the bottom of the screen. And when you click on that, then you get your chevron pattern, and you click on Apply. And now I'm going to select All and type S to Stack and Weld. Now I have a letter with a chevron pattern. Now, right here, I got a little bit of the insides of the pattern. Um, I could fix that by making it a little smaller or um, making my um, shadow a little different. Let me do un undo it. Um, I got to make sure this fits. And I could zoom in, type 4, and see if I don't, I don't want to have any of these sticking out. So maybe I need to move it down or up. And I can use my arrow keys to adjust. But that's, this is, maybe it needs to go down just a little more. That looks smoother. So zooming in is very helpful. They should, it should be the perfect size since I use the same letter. Now selecting it all and welding gives me the, a nice smooth inside. And you can do this with each letter of the alphabet and then you can, you can put one on each page if you want or you can just do one letter at a time. You can make this into a monogram if you wanted to. I've seen some done like that.